Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Sheree, if you are new, welcome. In today's video, I am taking you guys along day in my life as a surgical tech. I'm gonna try to get some footage at work today. Um, I work mid shift, 11 to seven. So I go in, I cover lunches, and then I get assigned a room after my lunch. And that's pretty much how my days go. So I'm gonna take you guys through it. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna sit down and chat with you guys about all the different shifts and all the little things that I can tell you guys about my experience as a new tech so far. I've been working for about five months now. So yeah, let's get into this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Let's go to work. All right guys, so first thing I like to do once I get to the hospital is I go ahead and I get fresh scrubs so I can change and get ready to get on the floor. So I go ahead, I go to the machine and I put my size in and it gives me a new fresh pair of scrubs every day or whenever I need to leave the hospital to get lunch or something, I come back and I do the same routine over again. So I get a fresh pair and I change so that my outside clothes is not going into the sterile area. So I go ahead and I change and I have a hospital cover, a surgical cap that I usually wear, but the hospital does not allow you to just wear your own. So I usually cover it anyways. The next thing that I do is I go check out the lunch board because I need to see who I'm giving lunches to. Today is only 30 minutes. So I got four lunches to cover. Usually it's 45 throughout the rest of the week because Wednesdays we have in-service so they start later. So 30 minute lunches means I get four and 45 means I get three lunches. So I do that and then I go ahead and I scrub. I like to just do my, I have to do a big scrub. So the wet scrub, um, the packet there I'm showing you, it's probably one of the most pack popular packages that you will see that to use. Um, or it's the, this is the CHG and I believe some of the other ones are the iodine scrubs, and then you have your lovely sterilium, which is your dry scrub. I typically don't recommend using that if you're a new student or you're new to the operating room. It's good to get your practicing with your wet scrub. Um, so I do the wet scrub and then throughout my lunches, because I'm giving lunches, I'm not gonna do a five minute scrub every time. So I usually do sterilium in between my lunches, my lunch coverages. So here I am scrubbing for my first lunch. And I don't go in wet, so I usually scrub and then go find my gloves and like my gowns and whatever that I need. And I try to get a few and just put aside so that I have, um, I'm not running around sometimes. But usually there's a lot around the hospital that is easy to get to. So this was my first lunch for this day. I usually go in and they're about to finish the case. So here I was just breaking down this case for the person that I relieved. So I think I finished up and then was I had to break down the case basically. So I'm just breaking down the table and putting back things where they belong. And then this was my second lunch. So the second lunch I had to set up the person's table for them. It was a breast case, which is fun. Sometimes I like to set up tables and stuff because I don't always get to do that. So it was nice having a day like this where I could set up tables. Even though I wasn't gonna use it, it's still nice to be able to do it sometimes. Um, so yeah, I was able to set up this person's table, account for them and just get the room ready and start the case basically. And then the third case that I had Third lunch, the room was already set up and ready. We were just waiting for the patient. There was a small hold, so we were just waiting. And then I didn't get the last lunch, but here I am on my lunch. So I usually give lunches and then I take my lunch. And then after my lunch, I'll get assigned to a room to relieve someone that leaves at three or I'll be trauma team. So I like to just go to a little corner, there's like a little room, and I love going there to just have my lunch because there's no one really in there. Sometimes my coworkers join me, but it's nice to have someone else to talk to. But it's a nice corner and the main lunch room is like usually so packed. And this is like another day, honestly, because I didn't get all the footage in one day because as you can see, I'm not wearing my other scrub cap. <laughs> so this is footage from like different days, but it's basically a run through of how my day goes and what I do during my shift basically. So I usually catch up on like one of my favorite shows or something 
and yeah, I'm just going to eat my lunch and I usually have a few minutes before I have to go get someone out at like 3.15 or so. So my lunch pretty much starts at like 2. Sometimes it goes over if like my coworkers take long and they extend their lunch, which they're not supposed to, but it happens. Um, so I'll usually go to lunch at like 2 and then I don't have to cover someone until like 3. So it's nice because you get a nice little break. Um, I really enjoy working this shift. It's really up to you guys. Um, I don't like mornings, so I don't like waking up too early. So I like this shift. And then it's now three and I had to go relieve someone. So I'm taking over their case. And this is nice because I was able to set up my own table and do the case myself. So here I am. I think I was setting up for like a washout. Um, I like to use the basin and not everyone likes to use your basin, but I love using the basin and having everything packed up into my basin. So sometimes I'll get either just one case at the end of the day or I'll get two cases. I think this day I was able to get two laparoscopic cases that day. So here I am. I set up for a laparoscopic, a, this was a trauma, I think, or just an emergency. Um, and it was just a laparoscopic appendectomy. And this is my basic setup that I use for these cases. I try to use the same setup all the time and it just becomes clockwork to me. So this is my basic setup. I wasn't familiar with the doctor and what his approach was because it was a new clinician. But um, so usually I have like all those instruments. I don't have all those instruments on my Mayo stand if I know. And here's my basin. I use the basin a lot because it allows me to get my table and my Mayo stand ready just in case we're rushing. And the doctor can go ahead and grab all the cords and drapes that they need while I'm finishing either gowning the rest of the team or whatever. And then here I am just breaking down the table. The case is done. Um, we have to go ahead. We have to like wash our instruments throughout the case in water. So I usually save my basin for that. And so the basin I usually keep with just water. And I soak my instruments throughout the case so that when the case is done, there's no like bio burden left on there. And it's easy for when it goes down to SPD, it's already halfway clean so they just need to like sterilize it again and there's not like dry blood or anything on there so as you can see I have just a bunch of my instruments that's been sitting in water and that just really helps with reprocessing them and the time that it takes SPD to do that so that's something to like I, this is all also hospital policy. It's a it's hospital based, but it's something that I recommend doing. It's very helpful to um, do that. And then I get all my water and liquids into one bowl because we have to solidify everything at the end of each case. We don't pour water down the drain or anything like that. So I usually set that aside and then I basically just clean up my table, make sure all my sharps are taken care of. That's usually the first thing that I do, but here you guys can see that. But so there's my little sharp box. I get all my sharps together and make sure that they're all accounted for. I don't think the patient left the room yet, so I didn't go ahead and throw them out right away. So sometimes I like to just keep them handy just in case. You never know. So I go ahead and I relock all the, I restring the stringed instrument, the ringed instruments. Um, that's just the way our hospital likes us to send them back down to SPD on the stringer. So I go ahead and I put everything back in the order that they came up and I put them back into my pan. And the next thing that we do to help with bio burden and just to help SPD is also spraying the instruments. So our hospital gives this instrument spray that we spray before we send them down in the case guards. Again, it just it's a big help to SPD and it just helps in the long run for us to just start that process upstairs. And then something that I actually really like to do, and I've just been doing it, someone taught me this in clinical and it stuck with me, is that I actually put everything that's from my back table and my mayo stand in my mayo stand cover. So just in case, you know, something happens and you need to find something that's missing, I just know that everything that came off my table is in my it's in this bag and I know exactly where to go find it just in case, you know what I mean? So that's something that I do. 
I've just always done that. I take everything that's from my, of course, not my sharps because sharps do not go into the trash. They go into the appropriate um, needle bins because it's a biohazard. So here I am just taking all the trays, putting them back in the case car, and then I will get rid of my sharps. At this point, the occasion's out of the room and I can get rid of all my sharps and break down my table. And then after that, I have to put everything back into the case cart and send it back down to SPD. So here I am just bringing the dirty case cart back. I do have to stick a biohazard dirty tag on there, which you guys will see. So you always want to put one of those on your case cart so that downstairs knows that this is a dirty cart and it needs to be sent back for reprocessing in the elevator. And that's pretty much my day. It's time for me to go home. And that's pretty much how my day goes. I am going to come and talk to you guys and give you guys some more information and things. And we can chat. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys. So it's days later from that whole video so i just wanted to come on here and kind of sit and chat with you guys and go into a little bit more detail about my work schedule and how many days i work versus what you could potentially do when you start working and what hours are there that are available so at my specific hospital i work at a trauma one center and so i there's multiple shifts that you can choose from you can go in the regular day shift seven to three which is something you kind of have to do like unless you apply for strictly overnight and even so you have to start orienting on day shift so you have 73 shifts and then you have 11 to 7 which is what i do and then you also have 3 to 11 and then overnight which is 11 to 7 and if you want to do like four tens, then you work from seven to five. And then if you want to do three twelves, you work from seven to seven. And I don't want to do any of those. <laughs> um, first of all, my hospital wasn't doing three twelves for a very long time. They just started trying out three twelves. It's not recommended for me because I work mid shifts. And because my shift comes in and we cover lunches, I don't have to try to do 12 hours because I don't really need to. And it's kind of hard to do 12 hours when you work 11 to 7. Um, but I really like that shift because personally for me, I really hated waking up very early in the morning. It was very, very hard for me. And my fiance also works in the healthcare field and he works night shift. Um, so he works evening shift. So he works three to 11. Therefore, I would never see my fiance if I worked, if I stayed on day shift. So I had the more flexible schedule. So I ended up changing, but so that's one of the biggest reasons why I ended up changing my schedule is because I wanted to see my fiance and now I can see him in the mornings before I leave for work, which is really nice. It's not a lot of time, but it still gives me time. And I just, I don't like waking up. Like I said, I don't like waking up 73. It's too early and then when I get off at 3, I'm way too tired to do anything and the day kind of just gets away from you. So I prefer 11 to 7, but it's definitely a shift that you have to kind of be comfortable with your skills because you could literally get anything. You get whatever trauma that comes through the door, it's probably going to be you. Like the later in the day that the shift goes, it's likely that there's less staff available. So when you work day shift, there's a lot of people scheduled, there's a lot of people around, managers are around, just like periopti more perioptics are around, just a lot more help is there for you. So if you're just starting out, I would recommend sticking with 73 until you start getting comfortable and you can manage to be on your own independently and figure out where things are in the hospital and know what to do when there isn't a lot of help around to help to kind of guide you things um i mean i i'm just five months in i wouldn't say that i'm like totally like i'm obviously not that experienced and stuff but i think i can handle like what comes to me and if i don't feel comfortable and i've talked to like you know my bosses and stuff like that like i think last week i had a crany and i'm just I'm not comfortable with cranies and I put that on my report when I was done with orientation that 
cranies, neurosurgery, all that stuff is just not my thing. I can do spy neuro, but I can't really, I'm not comfortable with scrubbing neurosurgery, like craniotomies and all that stuff. And it's simply because I did not get a lot of training in craniotomies. Like when I did my internship, I did not see any neurosurgery at all. The hospital that I was at didn't really do them and they didn't really have a neurosurgery and it was something very, if they do, they had a team and it was very team based and so I didn't really get to see that. And then when I was on orientation, I was probably put in one craniotomy case. So you can imagine I was like, yeah, I cannot do this case on my own. And obviously if I'm able to like shadow someone still at this point, I would try to do that just to get familiar with them. It's also the instruments. Let me tell you, I struggle with like ENT instruments, um, spine, neuro, like I don't, those instruments are very, for me personally, um, because in school they didn't really touch a lot on those in depth a lot of those instruments and I feel like there's still a lot of instruments in those kits that I have no idea what they are and I feel like in a craniotomy you need to know what you're doing because someone's in the brain you gotta you know so I explained to my one of my co-workers she was lucky enough to be able to switch off with me and put me in something ortho versus that so it's really about being comfortable like make sure i think one of the biggest things that i will tell you as a new scrub is be comfortable never say yes to something just because you're afraid of saying no or you think you should know how to do this by now it's this is a this like surgery is very very like it's a very delicate situation and no matter what the case is it can always go from zero to a hundred and if you are not 100 percent comfortable with a case a procedure a certain specialty you need to speak up like yes you have to learn but there are certain plate like there's a time and place and to where you can learn and learning shouldn't be let's say for instance a trauma like that shouldn't really be like that full-on full learning experience for you when you're not comfortable with like craniotomies if there's an emergency crany and you've never done a crany you're probably not the best person to do an emergency craniotomy you know what i mean um so it's and like if you've never done newer surgery you're probably not the person to put in a room to do an emergency craniotomy so know your strengths know your weaknesses it doesn't make you any less of a person to take a step back and really evaluate and see what your strengths and weaknesses are and the appropriate time to work on those strengths and weaknesses and weaknesses you know what i mean so um that's one thing i wanted to give you guys some advice on is just to make sure that you are comfortable with whatever you get put into like yes there are certain days where they're short staff but if you feel like you're not going to be of any help to the patient then you need to speak up and that's just that that's my personal opinion my personal opinion like shoot give me a vascular case give me anything but neurosurgery i am okay um also okay and so i talked about shifts yes yeah, so different shifts um again if you're just starting out you're probably back they're probably gonna let you do you know seven to three and again my hospital doesn't really do long shifts 312s it's just beginning so if you have a hospital that you know doesn't I'll, but a lot of hospitals out there really are into that 312s and that 410 type of shifts but if you're just a person who just wants to do your regular nine to five your regular you know eight shifts monday through friday then that's fine you don't have to feel like you need to do that 12 hour shift unless the shift you apply for it that's what it states then you're kind of in a pickle right so be aware of that make sure when you're applying to jobs you see what shift you're applying for if it says it varies and usually it says varies then when you get on that phone and you do your interview make sure you ask what exactly which shift you're going to be working because they also might try to throw you in a shift where they're short staff and usually that's the later shifts in the day and again if you're not comfortable with your skills yet that might be a little bit hard for you what else did i want to touch base on 
so yeah but that's my day to day when i go in 11 to 7 like i said in the video i cover lunches from like 11 15 to 2 2 15 sometimes 2 30 because people be crazy but the general time is like 11 15 to the acceptable time to start giving lunches like you can start at 11 but it's fine if i go in at 11 15 i think um because that's like the time that people start getting ready to go to lunch and stuff um as long as you're done around 2 15 and stuff because i need to take my lunch and if i'm late to covering lunches then that means i'm cutting into my lunch time and then i'm late to covering the person that i am i'm late to recover my three three o'clock person so then after my lunch i go and i get someone out that's supposed to be leaving at three and then I either I'm finishing up their case or I'm starting a case or in the middle of a case it really like varies um, some days they're done and the room is done and then I will sit for a few hours and I become trauma team or there's something else that's coming into that room but it's not coming right now it's an emergency but it's not really an emergency and we're waiting on something and sometimes so some days it's not as jam-packed as you guys saw in the video some days i literally it's three o'clock my room is done i go to cover the person they're like we're done and there's nothing going into that room for the day everyone else has a room and i'm just like my charge nurse is like just hang out <laughs> just just hang out you a trauma call if there's a trauma you're taking it you know and so that's the shift like sometimes it really varies like i've had days where i've had very busy lunches and then straight at 3 15 i'm scrubbed in i'm in a long case and finishing up a long like robotic case or something and i'm there until someone gets me out at seven or i don't get out at seven because i don't have any coverage so that's the thing too is that there's not always a seven o'clock person sometimes they call out again the later in the day you go the less people are available so sometimes i get stuck in a room at seven because there's no relief like as soon as i see my charge walking in the room i'm like you don't have relief for me and it's fine sometimes i can gauge the case and be like okay this is almost done it's okay i think the latest i've had to stay is probably an hour after i'm supposed to leave which is nice but on other times you know it's not always the case um and then call i take call every eight week period so my schedule at my job is every eight weeks and within that eight week period i have to take six calls during the week and two overnight shifts and two weekend calls so six weekdays two overnights and two weekend calls so usually since i'm there until seven my call is four hours during the week and so it's from seven to eleven honestly never really have to stay until that time until 11 they never really need you again it's later in the day cases are starting to slow down um there's no need there's usually people who are scheduled at 3 to 11 shifts so there's coverage so usually i hardly ever have to stay for my full call shift um and then you still get paid so it's nice um, and then two overnights again i haven't gotten called in for overnight yet thank be the lord but that's a full eight hour shift so overnight call is from 11 p.m to 7 a.m i don't really get called in and then weekend calls depending on the shift you sign up for so with weekend calls there is the first call second call and then there's a 3 to 11 shift that gets called in so i usually sign up because i want the extra cash i usually sign up and it's also because i get a better idea of how my day is gonna go so i usually sign up for the seven to three call shift and i usually just go in like i don't wait for them to call me i just know I, I go in because i'm the first call and usually they run two rooms on saturday or sunday and so they need a backup team there to give lunches or for trauma so i just go in seven to three because it gives me a better handle on my day versus 3 to 11 call it's like mm, are they gonna call me i don't want to go out i don't want to go do something because 
I don't know if they're gonna call me and I'm gonna have to drop what I'm doing in the middle of the day to pick up this call shift. And again, I don't wanna pick up overnight. I did, this eight week period, did pick up call for 11 and 7 a.m. But let's hope that I don't get called in. And that's just because it's very rare for you to get called in for those shifts unless the 11 to 7 person calls out that's usually the case so hopefully that doesn't happen for me but even sometimes when you take call even though it's eight hours long you don't necessarily have to stay for the whole eight hours like if it's very busy then sometimes i've had to stay from 7 to like 2 30 but sometimes i've gone in and the cases go pretty fast and i've just covered lunches and i'm done by like 12 and i can go home um like 12 or 1 and i can go home so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stay the full eight hours it just means you have to come in um help cover lunches or give someone a break or be a trauma team and it doesn't always necessarily mean that you have to stay until the, for the full eight hours basically so that's how call works for my job and the nice thing about it is that for my job we pick our call schedule so you pick the days that you're on call it's not like someone's you're bringing a beeper home and someone's beeping you in the middle of the night like you got to come in no you we get to pick our call schedule so you know ahead of time that you're going to be on call what days you're going to be on call what time you chose because honey you are in charge of it i know there's probably some places that give you a pager and it's just by that but i i don't know i haven't worked anywhere else so i can't compare but i know from my job specifically and it might be nice for you to when you're interviewing to ask about that it's very important stuff to ask about how does your call system work what kind of life do you want to live <laughs> this is all it all based on the life that you choose you know what kind of life do you want to live i prefer to live an easier more peaceful life which is why i work 11 to 7. it's a very it's not very stressful like some days it's just easy to go through it some days it's a little bit harder but for me personally i believe in quality over quantity for my life and i want a quality life and when i'm stressed out monday through friday it's just not a good thing for me so choose the best thing that works for you just because you're new doesn't mean you need to get stuck with the worst shifts with the longest shifts with the worst call shifts just make sure that whatever it is that you're choosing to do that you actually want to do it because it's very important this is a career and you should be in charge of how your career goes and yeah you know speak up make sure that whatever you're doing you're comfortable with doing make sure you're staying in the scope of your practice it's very important to remember you can't do certain things know what you can do know what your limits are and speak up i will tell you right now the operating room is a very toxic place so and i don't believe in a whole thick skin thing like excuse me if you hurt my feelings you hurt my feelings <laughs> okay i don't believe in a whole thick skin like oh you have to have thick skin to work here like how about we start telling people not to be mean and not to be rude okay that's the culture that we need to be changing is that you should not need to have a thick skin to work with surgeons it should just be you need to be nice and you need to be put in your place real quick <laughs> um sometimes you're gonna have to let them know that you're not the one or the two or the three and you can do it respectfully obviously do it very respectful uh, be respectful around the people that you're working with it's a very operating room it gets small it gets tense and the last thing you want to do is be working with someone who's very just you know so speak up stand up for yourself don't let anybody talk to you in a way that you don't appreciate if it needs to go up the ladder go to your boss but you need to make sure that your working environment is peaceful for you and if someone's in there that's you know doing the most then you need to check it and that's just how i feel um again just don't be afraid to speak up this is your if the operating room is 
very much yours and it is everyone else's without you there is no operating room basically like without the tech there's no there's nothing like you the surgeon and the team and the patient is going to come into the room and nothing is going to not going to be there like if you don't have all that then they've got nothing they can't do anything so always remember that you are super important to the operating room you make that thing go ding okay <laughs> you make the room ready okay without you it's very hard for everyone else to do their job so always remember that and be a team player be nice to your circulator and vice versa circulators be nice to your scrubs and let's have a great time out there <laughs> regardless of how things may seem sometimes because the operating room can be a very stressful place but you got this if you're a new tech you got this if i could do it you can do it okay so really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have any questions comments i know i didn't touch everything i'm kind of doing this video very this like little run through very late and i'm very tired so i apologize for that but if you guys have any questions feel free to hit me up my social media is right here hit me up on my social media i'm always down to give advice always down to chat um tell me anything in the comments that you want to say you want to ask me i will respond and anything else you would like me to talk about touch on but yeah i just wanted to give you guys a little insight on my day currently i know the last time i post one of these it was day in the life as a scrub student she's no longer a student we're working she's a working girl um but yeah really just wanted to touch base with you guys and show you guys how it's been going and how i think things are going and i think they're going great um i really like the shift that i'm working i really like that i figured out i'm kind of figuring out you know things before i get sucked into this depressive burnt out mode that hospital workers usually get into and as a new tech it's very important to be on top of things so that you don't get dragged into the worst shifts the worst operate the worst surgeons to work with don't get stuck with anything that does not make you happy okay that's the takeaway don't get stuck with anything that does not make you happy um but yeah Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming and chatting with me and hanging out with me. As always, I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And comment down below and interact with me and chat. And let me know if you have any questions. Again, my social media is Life with Cherie. You can find me on Instagram, Life with Cherie. That will be me. And hit me up on there and we can chat. Again, have a good one. Bye, guys.